the most pathetic and frustrating experience we have in this life is that men, men, he said it is men who carry the image of God inside them are living like men, men, walking about like slaves, men who have the spirit of God inside them, men who have the life of God in them, are living like ordinary men, beggars, stealing and lying. He said that is one of the most pathetic things that he has ever seen in his life. The day I read it, I closed the, the book. I closed that book. I didn't continue again. I went on my knees and I began to pray and beg God to help me. I'm dealing with something that is very, very, you know, you know this thing I'm talking about. Because you grew up with it, you are born with it, you grew up with it. Ever since you gave your life to Christ, some of us have never ever seen the other side of life, the other side of God. So when you talk about the glory of God, the power of God, and all those things, it doesn't, you can't relate with it because you have never seen it. And you have not even witnessed somebody who carries such glory and power and honor. <clears throat> all that we have seen are people who are displaying material wealth and all of that. Who, who has what you are looking for? And so you are pursuing them right, left, and center as if you are a slave and living a low level and below average life. And to be able to help you to come out and see is a very big problem. The reason why, the reason why God will leave all the people that are in the land of Israel every one of them, and went to that woman of Zarephi, that widow. There were so many widows. But he left every of them and went to that particular woman. There was a reason. Anything that you are not desiring for, anything that you are not hungering for, anything that you are not passionate, it will never come to you. God is not like that. The way you want to relate with him is uh, casually, you casually want to relate with him and all that. He is not interested. I was telling them, last, it was it last Saturday or last two Saturdays, the only offering that God takes from you are those offerings that are of sacri that has a sacrificial value. If it doesn't have a value of sacrifice in it, God will receive it from you. God can only receive things that are of a high value in your life. That's what he will receive. If you just want to give him peanuts, he won't answer, he won't touch it. That's why most of the time, all the offering and all of that, he doesn't even go anywhere. He will see the result in your life. That's why David said, I cannot give God what does not cost me. So what we do is uh, you live the rest of your life begging, 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 everything free, everything free, everything free. Meanwhile, you are living in abundance. You are a child of God. You are a son of the Most High. And then the world are crying and you are joining them and crying with them. What is the difference? You know me, I said, if this Bible we are reading, if this thing that I'm seeing in the Bible, if it is not real, if I cannot experience it, in my, close the book. Let me go and forget about God, forget about every other thing. Let me go and live my life, live it full, the way I want to live it. But if the Bible in the Word of God is real, let it be real. I want to see the reality of it. I don't like religion. Religion is not good. It will keep you poor, wretched, miserable. And what we have had over the years behind the pulpit is that we are making misery of the people, making them slaves all the more. 
instead of equipping them, helping them to know who God has called them to be, making them to know. Give me, give me Ephesians chapter, Ephesians 3, 8. Ephesians 3, 8. He said, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Verse 9. And to make how many men? All men to do what? See what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world have been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in the heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. To make all men see what is the, the fellowship of that mystery. What is the mystery? The mystery of the mystery talks about secrets. They are hidden, they are not in the open. God has shown him that he wants to reveal it to show you the unsearchable riches of Christ. And we are joint heirs with Christ. Everything that belongs to Christ belongs to you. If you don't want to be a poor man in your life, if you don't want to be a beggar, if you don't want to take one step forward and take two steps backwards, if you want to be on top, If you want to have a rich life, a quality life that befits your status as a child of God. If you don't want to keep on borrowing and begging and begging and begging all the time. If you don't want it. If you're tired of suffering, if you're tired of Living a miserable life. I want to introduce you to something that will help you come out of it. And that it is called faith. F A I T. The Bible declares in a Hebrew chapter 11, verse 6. Actually, in verse 5, Hebrew 11, 5. The Bible said that by faith, a man called Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. Before his translation, he had this testimony that he did what? He pleased God. A man like you and I in the old, the, the, the Old Testament had not even started then. A man walked with God and pleased God for 300 years. The Bible tells us in Genesis 5. 300 years he walked with God and the man didn't die. God took him just like that. And the Bible said that there is a testimony about that man because he pleased God. That was a testimony. How did he please God? Verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. So how Enoch pleased God was by faith. How did Enoch please God? By faith, without faith, you can't please him. He didn't say without fasting and prayer. He didn't say without sowing seed. He didn't say without showing love. He didn't say without seeing vision or making prophecies. He said without faith, you can't touch God. 
We have heard the message of faith over and over and over, but we have heard the wrong thing. And that is why after you finish hearing it, nothing is happening in your life. And you do all the confession, at the end of the day, you are still back to square one. Nothing is happening. Nothing is working. What it means is that there is something wrong with the message that you are hearing. Because if that message is true, you will see that I love evidence, so I love result, I love fruits. Anybody that is doing anything with God without evidence, without fruit, you're wasting your time. As a matter of fact, you remember how he had caused a tree that does not have fruit in it. He was hungry, he came looking for fruit in that tree. So when he came closer, he discovered that there was, he put a curse on that tree. If you don't bear fruit, fruit is evidence. It's evidence of you being a Christian. Is evidence of you being the son of the most high. Is evidence of you that is born of God. The Bible says, if anyone that is born of God, you cannot sin because the seed of God is inside of you. And that is the truth. So if you are living in sin and all of that, something is wrong with the message that is being preached to you. You keep preaching the message. You, the more you hear the message, the worse the your life it turns out. Something is wrong with the message. If you hear the right thing, you will believe the right thing. You will do the right thing. You will get the right result. Your life will be changed and transformed. We need to do something. Though, and what we need to do is not just because if you want to have a change, then you have to do something different. If you want to see that change, you have to, the way you have been doing things, the way you have been relating with God, the way you have been praying and every other, everything will have to change. Your attitude towards God must change. If it remains the same, then there's not going to be any change in your life. A madman, they say, is a person who expects to see a change, but you continue doing the same thing that you've been doing over and over. That's what they call the mad person. I told you the day I read that thing from the EWKM. You can't be telling me that by his stripes I have been healed and then I will be carrying sickness in my body. Is it, is it, that, is it that what I read in the Bible is a lie or something is wrong with my understanding? If he said by his stripes I am healed, then I must be healed. If he said that these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out them. Then I must cast devil out. If I don't cast him out, then something is wrong. Is it that God is a liar? What are we saying? What are we talking about? We played around religion over time. Religion and religion and religion and pretending to be what we are not. You know, my wife traveled. She went to Italy. Italy. <clears throat> she came back on, on Tuesday. She flew from Florence, just about one and a half hour, to Paris, where she will board the plane. But all the while, they've been sending messages, sending through email, sending messages and messages that the weather is very bad. After some time, because he, she told me that the weather, the, 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 the weather is very hot. So somewhere along the line, they keep sending message that the weather is bad. And then by the time she got to the airport, waiting to board, they said that they cannot board. They, they, the plane can't fly. That they postpone every flight for three days. So she will be there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That today is what? That the next the flight will start today, Friday. <laughs> she said, no way it won't happen. Me. She lifted her hand. Everything about the weather, clear. Let the weather be perfect. 
condition for flight. There is nothing like postponing my flight and all of that. I clear every confusion, whatever, and all of that. She was at the airport. Though. The next thing they said, the flight will be flying. The plane will be flying. And when she entered the, the flight and took off and all of that, they said they are not going to fly again. That is, any other plane that she was the last one that left. No other plane leave, left till this morning. The kingdom of God is not in words, talking, talking, talking. It is reigning in life. It's about reigning in life. It's about reigning in life. That's why we have set this time to gather everybody to sit. You must, you must. That's why I said, you see, at the end of this meeting, is either, is either you translate or you remain poor forever. And the reason why you will remain poor forever is because that is what you want. I hate religion. If Jesus is Jesus, let him be Jesus. If he's not, let him live being Jesus. The things I read in this Bible, I, you see, that is not, I don't know. He said, I'm, I'm, I'm an heir of God. I am a son of God. I am a son of God. God has bought me with a price. I belong to him. And by being the son of God, it means that I have access to everything. Luke chapter 15, verse 25. Let me show you something. I've read it before. You can go back to 20. He was talking about the prodigal son. The guy rose up one day and decided that he's not doing it again. So he went to his father, even although he, he needed that his father must have been dead before he can have access to his own inheritance. He went to his father and said to his father, give me my own inheritance. And so the father, being a just man, divided the inheritance and gave his own. He took his own, collected everything, and went to a far country. And there, he wasted every single thing and began to eat. He, he went and then got employed in a farm where they are feeding pigs. And because there was no food and all of that, at a point, the food he, they were, he was giving to feed the pigs, he was collecting, cheating the feed, the, the, he was cheating the pigs from their food. Pig food, he was eating it. He got that bad. So the Bible said, at a point, he came back to his senses. He said, what am I doing here? My father, he has a lot of servants in the house. I must go back. He said, and he rose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and he had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And in thy sight, I am no worthy to be called thy son. Just watch. But the father said to his servant, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. And 25 says, for my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be married. Now his elder son was in the field. And he came and drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing. All one bear going on. And he called one of the servants and asked, What things, what these things be or meant? What is going on? And he said unto him, Thy brother is come home, and your father had killed a fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound. And then the elder brother was angry, and he would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. He didn't want to enter. 
And they told his father that your son is back home, but he is angry. He didn't want to come in because of so and so. Then the father came out and they began to beg him. And he answering to his father, Lo, this many years do I serve you, neither transgress I at any time thy commandment. I never broke any of your commandment. I have kept, I've been a good boy. And yet, thou gavest me a kid. Thou gave, and yet, thou never gavest me a kid. That I might make merry with my friend. Now my brother that went and wasted his whatever has come back. And you killed everything. Look at what the father said to him. But as soon as, his, as thy son was come, which had devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him what? The fatted cow. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever what? With me. Can you help me read it? Many. How many of you are God's sons and daughters? What the father has, does it belong to you? Are you sure? No, 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 I didn't hear you. All that the father has, does it belong to you? You are like this elder brother. You are like this elder brother. In so many ways and in so many fashions, in so many ways, God had tried to bring this knowledge to us. That's why Paul was saying that I might bring, show you the mystery of the fellow, they show you the fellowship of this mystery. The things of God are done are by revelation until these things are revealed, until the curtain is parted. You can't have access. They are concealed. Everything he said, <clears throat> and he said unto him, Son, he called him Son, you are ever with me, and all that I have, he didn't say some of the things that I have, all, all. My power, my glory, my wisdom, everything belongs to you. Who can tell me the problem of this elder brother? Yeah? He, he doesn't know his right. Uh huh. Ignorance, uh -huh. it is that ignorance and lack of knowledge and all of that are producing that jealousy, that anger, is an offshoot of the major problem. How many of us are like this? All of us, all, including me. That's why I cried to God. I said, God, help me. Help me. Help me out of this. How can I be a prince? If they call you now and say you're the president's son and all of that is around and all of that, you will put -pu wee wee inside your trouser because you will come out and be, and be, and be. Meanwhile, he's a son of a slave. the prince. I, the prince of God. Do you know what it means to be a son of God? Do you know? Do you know at all? When somebody will come and shout on you, intimidate you and do all that, that's why you look at yourself so cheap. That's why you as a prince, we stoop so low. Selling your body, messing your life up with women in the name that you are doing what? It's lack of knowledge. Have you ever seen a prince that is walking he goes and wears and wears torn jeans and torn clothes and torn whatever and you call yourself a, you are not! 
Something is wrong with you. You are mad. When you see Prince dress, I don't mean that you wear the best of the clothes. You can wear the whole thing that you're wearing in your body might be up to, may just be 1,000 naira. Shirt and trousers and uh, shoe, everything, 1,000. But it is very put together. It's clean and decent. Your hairs are well done. Cut, sharp, clean. Not this madness that is everywhere. In the name that you are, you are following Satan and devil and all those things that are selling from the pit of hell. And tomorrow we turn around and wonder why things are not working. Can you imagine a son praying? You know the way you pray. Because God is deaf. God doesn't hear. That's why you need to shout in his ears. Father! Yeah. Who are you talking to? He's your father. You are the son. He can imagine my son, Samuel, comes. You know how he talks to me? He comes, he says, Hi, Dad. He will bring out his hand, he will shake me, and he will hold me. He said, What's up? I say, You too, Uncle. What's up? He said, Daddy, please, I need some, I need the shirts. I need some shirts. I say, You come again. Or I enter the, I, that, ask him. I say, Enter. Check the one that you want to take. And he will go and collect it. I said, make sure you return it. He said, okay, I'll wait. He never returned it. He came, he will collect it. He said, I need a shoe. And I said, because we wear the same, the same size. And I said, go check. He called, he said, it's this one. I said, yeah, make sure you return it. He said, I'll wait. He never returned it. And I never asked him. And I never bought that. I was even happy that he's taking from me. If our fathers who are evil know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more your heavenly father will give the Holy Ghost? Can we just... We have had the wrong, 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 wrong message and gospel over the years. I'm going to take our time when we are done this morning, I will come back to you. I'm going to sit down. You are going to bring your Bible. And if you are coming here, you, if that is why, you see this your phone thing. You see this your phone. And I hate anybody that is coming in the church where I, where I am the pastor. Whether you want to give, you bring out your phone. You see that thing is very irritating to me as a person. Because this generation that we have is just not it. Carry your Bible. If it is big, carry it. Anywhere you go, carry it. You should be proud. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Because what? Because it is what? If you are laughing at me, yeah? If you are messing up, when it comes to demonstration, reality, you don't have it, I have it. With all your laughing, with all your whatever, you are stinking and smelling. I, with my eye, brush you aside. You can, I have not seen, if you are not born again, if you are not a child of God, if you have not received life in Christ, you are a worm. I don't care, if you, you can be a president, you stink, you smell. Nothing of you, I, I, I don't need your, I don't need even your contact. You can be a president, be anything, I don't need your contact. The contact that I need is from heaven. If I open my mouth and say, Heavenly Father, he hears me. I don't shout, I don't, I know. Just like my son will call me, I give him attention. Pastor John, has your daughter called you any day and you ignored her? Ibukunko? You, uncle. 
God is saying, even though our fathers who are falling, we have this amount of love for you. How much more? You know what the problem is? Lack of faith. But I'm going to tell you the kind of faith, where that faith breeds from. I told you at the end of this meeting, you are going to walk out this place a changed man. I do, I do not care. I do not care. Maybe self, you don't even, maybe you are worse than the, you know when a poor man calls a poor man a poor man. Maybe that is your condition. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any sense, any, any difference. When the hand of God comes upon, the power of God, he say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because the power, it is the power. That power is what takes care of you. That takes you. It turns your life around. And when God is done with you, you will be like in that dream. Is he me? Is he real? I can't imagine that I am the person that I am today. You need to, you, you used to, you need to see the kind of a person that I used to be. I've told you my stories. And God hasn't started though. This is just a beginning. He has not started. I've not even seen anything. Now we live in a generation of sin. Jesus calls it, he says, you wicked and adulterous generation evil and immoral people everywhere. Talking about Christians. No difference between light and darkness. No, it won't be me. I made up my mind, say, if I want to be a Christian, I'll be a Christian to the end, to the core. If I want to be an unbeliever, I'll be an unbeliever to the core. If you want to be a Christian, be a Christian. If you don't want to be a Christian, nobody is forcing you. Because it is worse. It is worse when you pretend to be a Christian and pretend, and then you are not a Christian. You are, you are neither hot, you are neither cold, you are neither hot or cold. You, hot, you are not. Cold, you are not. You are lukewarm. So no one, no two of the whatever will not receive you. The world will not receive you. The church will not receive you. You are in between. So why don't you be cold? Join the world. And when you join the world, live that life full. I don't envy all those people. All those, I entered the room to, yes, last night. I carried the whatever because I just came. I was very tired and I wasn't some slight headache. I just rested. I was just thinking of it. I carried the remote. I put on the TV. Channel one. You will lose your sanctity. Channel the second channel. Your sanctity, your holiness will go. The third one. The fourth one. If you see what they are doing on the TV, I shut it down. And some of you are watching it as you are looking at me. This night, last night, you watching. You sat down, open your eyes, and watching. When you finish, you come here. You are a disgrace. You are a disgrace. You are a disgrace. And that is why you are, you are going nowhere in life if you don't change. If you don't change. I say if you don't do what? You're not going anywhere in life. You say, what am I doing now? Shut it down. It's useless. Naked human. And these are people that are born. You know the day they were born, little kids, everybody can. Probably they may be a Yoruba person. They will block the road, block everywhere, and all of that. Call for party, and they will buy cut meat, those heavy, big, big chunk of meat. Everybody's eating. The day I was coming back to my house, you know that road, just one tiny road to enter my house. That small road, they blocked it. Put they block it. In the night, around seven, eight o'clock in the night. I said, what is it? He said, don't I know that they are doing party. If you are doing party, what is my business with that? Leave the road now, let me enter my compound. It was a problem. Because somebody was born, you are doing birthday party. 
open the TV, see them. They are the ones like that. Disgrace to humanity. The end, their end is destruction. They think they have life. They don't have. That is why you sit down there and be watching. When you finish watching, you don't know where your problem is coming from. You open yourself, immorality, spirit of immorality and fornication and adultery. Is a, you sleep, you see yourself sleeping with women in the dream. You won't know where it's coming from. Your life is on hold. Come out from among them. Touch not and unclean things. Have nothing to do with the evil work of darkness. Because there is no relationship between Christ and, G and Satan. No relationship between or righteousness and righteousness. You are a called that man. A peculiar person. A chosen person. A royal priest you are. Read it, it's in the Bible. Prove to me that that thing is not true. Tell me that this thing I'm reading is not true. But if it is true, so what is going on? Okay, sir. Um, it's just about the prayer, praying loud, basically. I pray silently too, but I just want to get it because you've mentioned it and you said if we don't understand anything at any point, we can't ask. And I pray loud too sometimes, even when I'm asking the Father. Sometimes he helps me shade off distraction. So are you saying that it is wrong for that to happen. So I will. You see, you have given the reason why you pray the way you pray. Okay? Is anything wrong with it? And oh, no. Okay? Now watch. This young man now sees him praying like that. Hmm? He will start. They will copy him and begin to pray like that. So he believed that if, if you don't shout, if you don't twist your head, if you don't bend your head and do like this, that's where the problem is. That's where the problem is. I don't copy people. I feel. When, sometimes I pray. When, when, the, when the anointing, the spirit of the lion spirit, when he wakes up from me, eh, I roar like lion. I have to anoint it. <laughs> I have to anoint it. One is a lion. The other one is a lamb. So when the lion own come upon me, eh, I don't care. I don't care who, but I don't care I don't care who you are. If you like, if you like, you can be your Jagaban. Your Jagaban is your Jagaban for. You see all those nonsense. They don't, I, I will stand before, I will write in your, I don't care who you are. It's me. When they, does lion fear? Have you ever seen a lion, something opportune, he ran away? I am of the lion of the tribe of Judah. That is your breed. And God has not given you the spirit of fear. He has not given you the spirit of timidity. He has not given you the spirit of inferiority complex. You see all the money that you have in your life? They don't shake me. They don't mean you are poor. Who is the richest man? Who is the richest man? Eh? Gio. Elon. Elon Musk. is a poor man. Go tell him that I say he's wretched, he's poor, blind. See, we don't know he's poor, wretched, blind. Does he feed you? If you are not in Christ, I don't have the time. There are some that I would have shown you. The, you know how to treat with treat all these things. Come and bribe me. Come and bribe me and say, take the whole of Lagos and then play according to your... I will, I will... 
I say, Shege, with all your Lagos, with all your whatever, with all your, to hell with you. You know, Satan came and offered Jesus Christ. He said, do you know what he said to him? He said, look at the whole of this estate, the world. It has been handed over to me. All I wanted you to do is to just kneel down. I will give them to you. If it were you, <laughs> what would you have done? You would say, no, I didn't hear you. I beg. Let's hear what. <laughs> if it's, you wouldn't even wait. You wouldn't even wait for him to finish. You will call it. That's what Adam did. And you think Satan, you think Satan is good? Amen. I say amen. 